And I'm really excited about today's discussion because we've got author D. Cassio who wrote the books, Where Will You Retire and Ready to Retire, which are two topics that we talk mm -hmm. about on a weekly basis. And so uh, I am excited to welcome Dee to the stage and there she is. Um, Dee, uh, thanks for, for joining us today. Uh, really looking forward to the, this chat. Before we dive into your book and to your books and the topic of work and life transitions, let's get to know you a little bit better. Tell us a little bit about your background and and how you came about writing these books and being. I would you refer to yourself as a retirement coach? Um, well, I'm a life and retirement coach. And first of all, it's really great to be here. I'm really pleased that you invited me to to talk about the books and to talk to your audience. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. So, so you, you want me to start with um, my background, which is... Yeah, yeah. tell us a little okay. bit about how you got to the point that you're at. And and where are you located right now? Um, Where am I I'm, I'm in Virginia. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. yeah, I'm in Virginia. We have a second home in, in Tampa, and that's part of the second part of our interview when we talk about where to retire. Okay, excellent. Um, all right. Okay, well, good. Yeah. So, so tell us what led to you writing these books and, and well, you, you know, it, it, it's kind. Of, I I I came to this. I've been a, a psychotherapist for thirty five years. I'm a licensed professional counselor and a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I really enjoy have enjoyed my work. I started uh, my private practice in my forties, right after I got married. Just went through a lot of changes, and and um, I really came upon coaching by accident. I was I was at a shower for a, a friend. I was in a peer a consultation group of therapists and our one of our, our members was getting remarried. And so I went to a shower and I met a woman there who was a therapist, but she also talked about her coaching practice. And I thought, well, hmm, that's interesting. And I asked her some questions and she was telling me that she had taken training and that she was paralleling her practices. So she was working as a therapist and as a coach. And I, and I, you know, I, I, I was curious, but I didn't do a whole lot with it. Uh, but a seed had been planted. And maybe a several years later, my husband, <laughs> he wanted to talk about retirement, but I was not, I was not in that place. Career-wise, I was right in the middle of it. I was having such a great time with, you know, uh, working with my clients, getting training. And, and with I was in several peer supervision groups. And, and I, so I gave it some pushback on that. And, and what happened was over the next several years, uh, several of my, my family members started to become ill with different kinds of cancer. My dad was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And what it did was it really made me think about the future and what I wanted, you know, for myself, for Tom. Um, it wasn't just about me. It was about him, too. He had things he wanted to talk about, and I needed to be present for that. So I started that seed, uh, I guess, was growing. And I began to think about coaching from the standpoint that, you know, how could I do that? and create more freedom in my life. Um, and so I started to do some research. And one of the things she said was, you know, you can do it by phone. I don't know. I mean, certainly people weren't using Zoom way back in when I was having this, con this conversation with her. So, you know, I, I did my research. I talked with her again. I, I reached it back out to, to Lynn. And uh, then I started the process of getting trained because I felt like that was a way that I could parallel my practice is I could be a therapist and work in person and I could also work remotely and and it might be that there would be a transition from therapy to to coaching I, so I that's how that all came about and well you know and I'm I'm a bit well I'm a big fan of therapy and uh and you, you know support groups and talking to others and I mean it's one of the things about these discussions is they're pretty therapeutic. But I think one of the, we talk a lot about stigma and language on these discussions. Yeah. And one of the things about 
sort of mental health and it's changed a lot with the pandemic and stuff, but there's still a stigma assigned to, you know, mental health. Oh, that's when you're broken or, or what have you, you talk to somebody, a therapist, a psychologist, what have you, the stigma is still out there. And I think just the term coaching is much more positive and, uh, and, you know, I, I, I like that. And I realize they're two different practices, mm -hmm. but, uh, but the end result can oftentimes be the same, you know, you're just talking to somebody. Right. Yeah. You're, 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 you're sharing, you're interacting, you're getting some insight. Um, and, and, you know, kind of with therapy, it's, it's, it is different with coaching. You're, you're, you're partnering with your client around what their goals are and what they want to achieve. Um, therapy requires, because there's usually a diagnosis, it requires, we do more regressive work and it, and it requires a little bit more holding through the process. With coaching and, and retirement coaching, I came to retirement coaching because I, I'm a baby boomer and I, and I could see in the future that there were going to be a lot of us turning 65. It started in 2011 and, and it won't end until 20, I think it's 2029 where all of us will have moved through that, that age of 65. And, and I thought, well, maybe this, because we don't have a good role model for how to retire and, but still stay active and vibrant and, and maybe continue what I like to call a retirement career. I thought that would be a good niche because I'm not, I wasn't really into doing niching in my therapy practice, uh, mm -hmm. but I thought this would be a good focus because there's so many of us. Great. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I agree. And, uh, so this is a really great discussion topic and um, we've got, and folks in the audience, feel free to jump in. Um, Please, yeah. What, what I, what in talking to Dee um, and I'm going to just share your website mm -hmm. on the screen, uh, which I shared in chat so you can mm -hmm. learn more about her there. But one of the things is she's written these two books, Ready to Retire and Where Will You Retire? And I love having authors on these discussions because you all have done obviously enough research to um, to put your thoughts together in a book that can be helpful to others. And because you've done that research, it's uh, it, it provides us with an excellent platform for a discussion. And so I you shared with me a PowerPoint that I'm gonna bring up here. And I believe okay. what your game plan is, we'll start first with the Ready reti to Retire book, and then mm -hmm. we'll go to the Where Will You Retire book. And uh, and again, folks, jump in and uh, and ask your questions. And Dee, you can um, you can check in with me periodically at, when I duck behind the curtains here, <laughs> and, um, uh, and or I'll jump in if any. Uh, specific questions come up on any of the things that that you're going over so everybody okay. should be able to see that screen and uh, just just say next and I'll advance it for you Dee. Okay all right um, let's see why don't we start with the transition process Steve and and and, and William Bridges is is uh, the person that developed this this particular uh, model, and he based it on Elizabeth Kubler Ross's transitions uh, through the grieving process. And you know, I I've kind of uh, added some other things to it so that it it you know is a little bit kind of easier to understand. Um, and first, the distinction between change versus transition. You know, change is. It's, ex it's external, it's visible, and it's tangible. You can see it happen as you can see the iceberg here. It's, it's like you can see the tip of it, but look, what all, look what's going on underneath. And that's the way it is with any kind of change that leads to transitions. It, it always leads to a transition, an, uh, an internal, emotional, and intangible part of that change. So... As we, if we're, we're talking about retirement and we're talking about, uh, you know, all the changes that we've gone through from the time we got our education, we graduated, whether we got training in a, in a particular skill or we went on to college, got a degree, we're working, 
we may or may not get married, have children, and you know, climbing that that corporate ladder or or making strides in your career. Those are all changes that we have seen others go through, our parents, our grandparents. Um, but this this whole change in, in our lives for retirement is different because as we're retiring, we've got a lot more years left to do other things. So, um, but change can be very quick, but transition is, is very slow. And here's the process, and that's the next slide. And I, and, and I want you to, to look at this model from the standpoint that you can use this model for any kind of change, not just retirement. If you've moved, if you've experienced your first child going away to college, um, if you've lost a loved one, any kind of loss can lead, is, is going to have an ending. We, so this is, you know, William Bridges started with the ending because you've got to really end something uh, before you can really begin something new and you have to have some degree of closure. So in the ending, you're letting go of something that, or someone who's been really important to you in your life. And so we're talking about retirement today and, you're, and, and for many of us, I know my work has been incredibly gratifying and, and it's a very gradual let go, letting go for me. But you can, you know, moving through these stages of, I can't believe this is happening and maybe even feeling some shock and anger about it and frustration, especially these things can be really magnified if you haven't done any planning. And that's, I'm really, that's what I'm really all about is in terms of the emotional transition to retirement is making sure that you plan. All, you know, most of the companies that I've interacted with over the years do a really wonderful job of planning, helping their employees plan financially. And, but they don't do a very good job, unfortunately, of helping them plan for the transition itself. What's it gonna be like when you're not working anymore, when you're not getting in your car and driving to work, you've got an agenda for the day, and then you come home. It's a routine. It's something that you're used to and you've been doing for a long time, even if you've changed jobs. So when you leave work, if you haven't planned, or even if you've done some planning, um, then you can, you'll end up, after having left work, in what we call the neutral zone. In the neutral zone, I like to, I, I've, I've um, read this somewhere, and I can't remember where it was, but is a, is a fertile void from the standpoint that once you've let go of something that was really significant in your life, there's, there's a kind of a void, you feel an emptiness, something's missing. And of course, it's your daily routine. Um, and so there can be some confusion and disorientation. You're feeling disconnected from the life that you knew to what the next part of your life is going to look like. Some people feel impatient, but there usually there's a, a curiosity about, so if I've got this time now, what, what do I want to do with it? What will I do with it? And that's a very, it's fertile because that's where a lot of growth can occur. It's the time that you can start, whether if you've got a plan in place, you start, you know, implementing that plan. And it may be that you start something that you thought you wanted to do. And then you might decide, well, I don't think that's working out so well. I think I'll go to plan B. So it's, it's a flow. The other thing that's important about this model is it's not linear. I mean, you don't go from one thing to the next to the next. Sometimes people go back and forth between the ending and the neutral zone because they get bored after they leave work. They feel lost. And so they, they find another job. And inevitably, that job's going to end and they're going to have to go through this again. And, and hopefully that, you know, there'll, there'll be some time for learning that planning, giving, at least getting some idea as to what you're going to do at this time is really helpful. And if you can, you know, do your exploration, try some different things, talk to people who have retired and how they've managed it and what they're doing, that's always valuable. Just like with your presentations every, every week, you're, you're educating everyone. It's educating ourselves about 
what we want this next stage of life to look like, then you are in to the phase of anticipating what's next. What's, what can I, what, how can I make something really good from where, what I've been through and, 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 and what you've been through in, the, through in the neutral zone. So you're more accepting, you develop more confidence in yourself. You can feel excitement. And at some point, hopefully there's contentment about your choices and what you've chosen to do in this stage of your life. And it evolves over time. It doesn't, it's not set in concrete and you can go back and forth between the neutral zone and the new beginning. So, and, and you know, I've done several presentations over the years where in one particular case, uh, one of the, um, uh, this couple called me the night, the, a couple nights before I was gonna present and they said, we really want to come, but we've got to meet with our financial planner and it's going to intersect with the time that you're going to be doing this presentation, but we'll try to get there. Well, it was the strangest experience because when I, by the time I got to the presentation, um, a couple days later, one of those spouses had passed away. So, you know, everybody was kind of in shock, but it, it really speaks to how we can plan all we want but we can't plan for some things. So, you know, one of the things I've learned in my own personal process here is that, you know, there's so much more to life than work, the work that we do in our careers. There's a lot more to us that we really haven't explored and developed. And that's what I really encourage people to do at this stage of life is to Explore that, you know, what else is there that you want to do that you've never had time to do or time to kind of develop in yourself? I, I love it. I know that's a long, long explanation. Oh, no, no. I, I, I love this diagram. I I use, and, and I love the modifications that people make to this diagram. I actually, when I used it in the workplace, it, you know, because change is something that occurs in the workplace all the time. The, the diagram that I use is similar to this, the Kubler-Ross one, but the, it has this, it, there's a line, a dotted line that goes from ending directly to the star. Oh. And it's called the should line. Because anytime we make a change, if you don't intentionally think about it, you think that, okay, I'm going to stop working. And now it's time to start my new beginning. And you think that you're just going to jump this little Grand Canyon right here and go straight to the star. But inevitably, I think if you revisit any change that you've had in your life, it has some form of this of, of this diagram and uh, remembering that and, and embracing that. And um, uh, OK, Dee. Yeah, yeah not, that's so I, true, Steve. I don't want to. Oh, go ahead. sorry. No, um, no. You you keep on going. I, I was just going to say that that's why endings are so important. Um, if you don't end something well, and, and I've seen this happen. And I know we're going to talk about relationships in a bit, but I've seen this happen with couples who divorce. They don't have good closure and then they remarry and they're, they're in my office. So, you know, closure, it, even though it's, it's work, it still has been a huge part of your life. So take it very seriously. <laughs> Yeah, I was, well, I, I, I first saw this diagram in a graduate school class and we were talking about change in organizations. And mm -hmm. then this, this woman sitting behind me, she said, this is exactly what happened with my divorce. You, you oh. know, I, I, I was getting rid of them and I thought I was going to go straight across to new beginning. And, uh, for 10 years, I was in the neutral zone, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, okay. Uh, Dee, yeah. I want to, I want to make sure to acknowledge some of the, the questions and, oh, okay. and things Good. that are coming in. Uh, Maritza says, I keep postponing my retirement. It's a huge change. I have a retirement home, but I can't get myself to take the plunge. How do I begin? Um, and, and I, 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 we, we don't need to answer this now. I just want to plant that seed, but do you have any thoughts for Maritza? Well, you know, some, what, if this helps, um, 
practicing retirement. I know it's kind of an unusual term, but I, I like to use it because you can begin to explore things. If, 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 if you're having, if you're having reluctance to retire and you really want to retire, how can you maybe phase out uh, or begin to do some of the things maybe in e uh, during evenings or a weekend, maybe one thing that you would want to do in retirement and, and have that be like something that creates a vacuum. So you're, you're, you're moving towards something that you really want to do as opposed to trying to extract your something, your, yourself from something that you don't want to do. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons that Tom and I started going to Tampa um, on a, a regular basis. And what we do what we do down there is practice retirement. So it's really beginning the process of planning. What do you want your life to look like? And talk to other people about what you're thinking, what you're feeling about it, because that can help to kind of soften and, and tease out what, what's the real worry. Because most people have enough money, but that becomes a spoke screen for not, not being afraid to retire because they don't have enough to do. Yeah. Be careful about saying most people have enough money. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. Uh, there's, um, a lot of people that. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Affordability yeah. is one of the big, big topics. However, yeah. the one of the things on that topic is that oftentimes people will say, well, I have to keep working my, my full-time job, even though I don't really care for it. And one of the things when I'm brainstorming with people, we're able to discover that, you know, if I scale down to a part-time job that I really enjoy, like working at a greenhouse or in a bike shop or something like that, um, I, I I don't have to draw on my social security and my savings as much, and uh, I can have a more enjoyable lifestyle. Um, exactly, right, and, yeah. And uh, Rose chimed in and she said, it took me three times. Uh, work fills different needs for different people. And um, it, I, I, it, I didn't make it out until I figured out how is I was going to replace what I was getting at work. And, you know, yesterday, oh, ye yesterday we had a discussion on, um, uh, we had a great discussion. And one of the, th one of the things that came up is how most of us meet most of our friends in the workplace. And when that's gone, you know, your identity and friendships may be gone, but yeah. uh, what, what jump in there. I think you had a thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I think this might be a timely uh, place to go to the what work provides. Oh, sure. Okay. What are your thoughts about that? This is the uh, the, the trapeze is is a, a side that that's how it can feel in the neutral zone sometimes. <laughs> it, you're like you haven't let go and you haven't grabbed on. You're just kind of hanging out there. So that's that's what that's all about. Okay. So thank you for that question because that's a good segue into a. a an acronym that I came up with um, uh, entitled Work Provides. And, and, and she's absolutely right. Work provides so many of our needs, um, gives us purpose. And, and these are all of them. It provides wages. So we're earning a living and supporting our families. It gives you a sense of order. Um, we form a lot of very significant relationships at work. In fact, in, in some of the presentations I've done, especially with government organizations, they they people were talking about leaving their friends and not wanting to 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 lose those friendships. So it takes more work to kind of stay connected there. And then you're always acquiring new knowledge and 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 um, on on the job, you get uh, in service trainings. It gives us a sense of purpose and meaning when we're going when we're doing a job that we really enjoy. We have recognition. We're, we're um, known for certain things that we do really well. We have the opportunity to grow, to, to, to advance in our careers. We um, uh, provide the quality service to people. And, that's, and, and so it's a value that, that's really important. Uh, it's a, we have a sense of identity because we are, in some cases, for, for some of us, not all of us, 
we kind of like are what we do. Um, and, and part of what I like to help clients with is to begin to explore more of the rest of their identity beyond work so they can begin to grow into those places. Um, you have a sense of direction, you know what you're going to do when you when you open those doors in the morning. Um, it's ex all the experience you get from from the work that you do. And there's a sense of stability that that comes from having work that you can go to every day. This so, is a uh, great, this is a really great chart. And it I, I think that even if you're not necessarily happy in your job, you can see where uh, the structure and the purpose of it uh, does provide some emotional, is very powerful for yeah. your esteem and your emotions. Yeah, so, so you know, if, if anyone is having the same struggle about letting go versus holding on, this could be useful because you can begin to work in some of these areas outside of work. You know, begin to explore some of these areas outside of work and and um you know begin the planning process now um i i i want to jump to an uh, another uh comment from leslie and and set who says my wife and i spent all of our money traveling so now we both have to work but we love to work it's because we love our work how essential is it to retire? Can't we just go on working the best that we can? And before you answer that question, um, one of the first books I read when I came into this field was The Age Wave by Ken Dykewald. Oh, yeah, and, I love his stuff. And <laughs> he wrote it, I mean, this is 30 plus years ago, but, but one of the things that he hypothesized was as we live longer lives, what if we had three distinct career change, mini retirements along this journey where you might, you know, have your first retirement and career change in your thirties and, and you go back to school, you change careers and then you work into your fifties and you do it again. And you maybe take a little bit of extended, uh, maybe you take five years and you travel like Leslie has. And then you know, it, it, when you're in your 60s and 70s, you you either take a job that you love or you go retrain or do something. And, you know, there's nothing wrong, I think, with working into our advanced age, especially if you've you're intentionally doing it and it's uh, it's you're balancing things out. But what, what are your thoughts on that, uh, Dee? Well, you know, I, I think that. Um... If you really love what you're doing, and I can relate to that because, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I love the work that I do. It's very gratifying. I'm doing less of it, and and that it, and that suits me just because of our travel schedule. But it's they're absolutely right. We are not in this traditional, uh, you know, retiring at 62, even at 65. If if you are in good health and you're enjoying what you're doing and you don't have uh you know any any it's not causing stress stay with it um be prepared to grow with some of the changes that will go on in your industry and keep up but i i am a fan of um i mean i'm just walking my talk as i'm sharing this is that i'm not retired retired but um i'm working you know less than i did so if 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 that works for for the especially because they're both in agreement and they both enjoy their jobs and so it, it, when when you are in a relationship that that is important to be able to synchronize what you're doing when you're doing it so that you know you're you're meeting each other's needs as well as your own yeah that and sense? um that makes oh sense. i i know i think it's great I, and you know I think it's important that you provide a lot of valuable guidance in in the in your thoughts and the discussion but everybody is different and and this transition in in life uh is unique to each of us you, you know yes. and and I do a lot of comparing the transition of kids going from high school to the next chapter in life and mm -hmm. you know it's really easy as a kid 
to think that, oh, I, well, I graduated from high school. I got to go to college. But how many kids have you and grandkids have you bumped into that it's sort of like, you know, I didn't, didn't really fit that mold and I'm mm -hmm. doing X, Y, or Z. And they still have a wonderful life because it's designed for them. They're not doing what the herd told them to do. Um, exactly, right. That, yeah, they're... Yeah. Um, oh, back to uh, Maritza, who was our, our first, uh, who kicked us off here on her <laughs> postponing retirement. Uh, number one, what she loved is your statement, practice retirement. But uh, she also brings up that one of the things that she's struggling with is I've got to pack, sell, or give away my things. That's the hard part. And, you, you know, so sometimes making this transition might not be at all about the work. It's about the other stuff. Yeah. Well, well say more about packing up. In other words, moving. Is that what she's talking yeah, about? Yeah, well, she's already got her uh, retirement home. Uh, so oh, that's right. She has like, a retirement yeah. home that's calling to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, um, oh, Maritza, you're getting the gold star today. She also says, I've worked <laughs> since I was 14 years old. I have oh. longevity genes and I can't see myself not working for the next 25 years. So lots of emotional things going on. There. Yeah, yeah, I can hear that. Yeah. Well, maybe when we talk about where um, and I share a little bit about what what we did is a, just an example. It's OK. I mean, again, there's so many different ways you can do this when we get to that place. Excellent. Um, all right. So, uh, so this this um, diagram is, you know, um, we all live in these arenas, and you might want to add some some extra uh, parts to this to this uh, circle to this pie. And and when I'm working with clients, I like to ask them to divide up the pie the way it, the, or the circle the way your life is now. And of course, work. Work would take a big, huge chunk of it. And then there's there's relationships and the importance of relationships. We probably ought to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Leisure activities, per, your personal growth. How are you going to keep that up after work? And then financial, you know, making sure your finances are in order and wellness. So if you look at your life, you're spending time in each of these arenas. And as you leave work or phase out, um, if, you, if you have the opportunity to do that, that's a, a newer concept that some companies are trying to figure out how to do, um, then, you know, you'll, your, your um, work will get a little bit smaller. You might spend more time on wellness. Financial might, I, I'm going to go the other way. Relationships might get larger too, because you've got more time for friends and maybe uh, your adult children and or grandchildren. Uh, then there's more time for leisure activities, personal growth. I mean, there's a lot. Those parts of the uh, arenas should hopefully expand or could be more balanced so that you're not putting all of that time and energy just into work. One of the things that I did, uh, I guess it was about 18 years ago, I it's, I, I've been in uh, Rotary Club for 18 years, and I joined mainly because <laughs> I joined because when my dad came to live with us. Um, I needed some help, and a friend of mine said, I, "I know somebody in our Rotary Club that could help you." And so I went to meet her. But I loved Rotary, and my dad had been a Rotarian for many, many years. So I got the help that I needed, but I also joined Rotary. And, and, you know, in the day when my dad was a, a Rotarian, women weren't allowed into Rotary. Of course, it's in the late 80s. I think it was late 80s. They they were allowed women to be members. But um, that that really, um, it's, it's my way of volunteering. It builds it into my lifestyle. And so, um, you know, I'm just bringing that up because there are a lot of areas that need, they uh, that, that where they are, they need volunteers to help out, whether oh, yeah. it's a civic organization, whether it's just it's your local hospital or your church or the American Cancer Society or the Alzheimer's Association. They really, you know, they need help. And 
again, looking for something that's going to give you uh, a sense of meaning and purpose. Yep. Is no, important. Great. Um, so, and uh, any questions on that? that uh, no, no. It looks like we're 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 moving forward here. Okay. Um, so I love this quote because it really kind of says it all. You you want to, you know. My brother said this years ago. He said you got to grab for all the gusto, and 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 it was re actually in relationship to after my mother had passed away because. She lived a short life, but she really loved life and enjoyed it and had a lot of friends. And, and, and so you want to do the things that you really, well, I'll just read it. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the things that you did do. So throw off the bowlines, okay? Sail away from the harbor, catch the tide winds in your sails, explore, dream, and discover. And that explore, it. dream, and discover is what you do in that neutral zone and after it doesn't stop there i love it no uh that that's great um oh wow okay we're uh yeah we have been burning through a, a, a lot <laughs> of uh info here pretty quickly um and here what i'm gonna do d is i'm gonna drop all your contact info into chat so people can reach out to you but um this was this is really good. I like how you organize things, and I like the I, I particularly like the especially since we talked about it yesterday. That you, you know when we think about retirement, which I like to refer to as graduation, yes. I refer to it as re-graduation. Um, but we think about it, and you can see by some of the comments is that folks are conflicted; they're wrestling with it. But, and it's sort of like, oh, I've got to stop working, you know, this, that, and the other is the thing that you've illustrated is you don't have to just rip the bandaid off. You, exactly. you really should um, uh, do some prep and uh, practice. But the other thing is our example with um, Leslie is it's okay to keep on working. I mean, yeah. it's whoever you are, because when, when, and, and, and I want to go back to it is because I think it's so good to, to remind us that, and, and actually, you know, what, what I, what I like about this uh, graphic, those of us who are currently working mm -hmm. and, you know, you have that horrible day on the job, your coworkers, you know, causing all kinds of problems, your boss is yelling at you, what have you. I think that probably if you if everybody looked at at these various elements you would find that there's more positive about being in that environment than negative and then again if there is more negative start looking for another job um yeah. but yeah. but but I I work is a uh, it provides us with community and purpose, which I think is is very important. Yeah, and and you know, I I think that that um, the the relationship part we haven't talked much about that, but the relationship part uh, is is important from the standpoint that uh, you and I talked about this uh, before we got on the um, session, Steve, about. Uh, during the pandemic, we've all, you know, struggled with isolation, not being able to be with friends and family, co-workers, we've worked remotely. And I think for, uh, for, for a lot of us, but I will speak for myself, it's really brought home the importance of um, being in person, even if it's a phone call, you know, you may not see the person, but you hear their voice and, and you know, nurturing those relationships because they come, they'll, they're, they're, they'll come in handy if you nurture them. You can always, you know, um, there'll be a time when you need, even introverts need relationships. I like Barbara Streisand's, you know, people who need people. That was really popular when, when I was, you know, a teenager and, and in college. Yeah. And, and we all need each other. So, you know, um, and as we've opened up more, I think that's why people are just just so hungry to be together. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, we got two really good questions here. Okay. I want you to address, and I'm going to start with um, with Oliver, who says, can you address retirement from the perspective of age differences between married couples? And uh, great, great question there, Oliver, because I yeah. do time to time talk to folks, my my wife and I, we only have two years age difference. But I tell you what, those two years of you know, imagine one spouse is retired and the other is working for two years. I do you do you find that those age differences are are something? Yes, I, I think that that is because if someone, if one spouse is older and they're and they're thinking more about retirement, they're moving in that direction. Um, it's important to have the support from the other spouse to and to have conversations about what's that going to look like in terms of how their roles will change if they will. Um, and to, if, if that if the spouse wants to, to, to retire to support that. And then the working spouse, I mean, in fact, it's it's helpful if one spouse retires first, kind of gets acclimated, and then and then the next one retires and, and you're a little bit more ready to, you know, join with each other and and keeping the this is the other thing I wanted to say about relationships is you know, you want to keep the autonomy uh, of the relationship so that you have your retirement, my retirement, and our retirement. So each of you has your own things that you want to do. And then you have things that you do as a couple. Because it's really, it's hard enough to plan for yourself, let alone when you have another person to consider. And that, and, and uh, Tom and I are seven years apart. And, and when my family started getting sick, I thought to myself, you know, how arrogant have I been about my health? Even though I have good health, you know, anything can happen. And, and, and I had to think about Tom being seven years older moving and he's still he's still working but not as not nearly as much as he was before um and and take that into consideration yeah and oliver has eight years so mm -hmm. very similar mm -hmm. to your um your to your situation right um, okay uh uh one thing uh s someone asked uh, uh is it okay if i share the slides um oh sure yeah okay so folks, I will put the slides up on the recording link, which will also have uh, the chat transcript and, and these information as well. And then the next question, which came up yesterday, and, and, and actually I think we kind of cut you off because you were gonna talk about where to retire, but Cindy asks, can you talk about where to retire, both domestically and internationally? And Cindy, um, I dropped in a link on a discussion we did about retiring abroad. Uh, definitely dive into that because a lot of the details about international retirement are covered in it, and it's very good. But um, but D, I think you're currently you've done some thought on this personally. Uh, yeah. Tell us some ideas that we can think about it you know, whether we stay right in the house that we're in or we transition somewhere else. Yeah, that, that's another discussion. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, another discussion between whether you're single and making that move on your own or you're married and, and the two of you have to decide. I know people that live in this area tend to want to move because it's expensive to live in the D.C., Virginia, Maryland area. Um, but uh the and I, I'm glad that you had that uh, you have that link for international because I don't have not really focused on that. I know that that is a trend for for um, some of the people that are retiring, and I know where we're located, where we have our second home in Tampa. The place is just exploding. I mean, there are so many high rises and apartments, condos going up. It's just like overwhelming. It's turning out to look like Washington D.C. rush hour, you know. Um, I'll, I'll give a, a brief story. Tom and I, years ago, Tom had a, a condo uh, as a part of his business in Sarasota, and we loved the West Coast of Florida. And so we decided when he ended that partnership, it was a limited partnership, that we would come back to Florida to buy a second home. And so years went by, and, and, and actually, my coach training 
precipitated what we ended. We finally ended up taking, you know, being honest with ourselves and true to ourselves and began looking. Um, and we chose Tampa because it was, it's 15 minutes to the airport from here, from, from Ashburn. It's 15 minutes from the airport to our condo. It's not a, a retirement destination. One of the things about Sarasota, which is just a lovely place, is it's a retirement destination. So during the season, it, it's, it, it's really hard to get around. Um, and so a lot of places like Naples and, and uh, Miami, it, it, so it, I think it's really important to, to do your research. But, but we decided um, to buy a, a condo down there only if we could use it on a regular basis. And fortunately, we have been, this is our 16th year, going down the last 10 days of each month, except during the summer, we don't go down. And that's where we've practiced retirement. And, and we did that after researching um, South Carolina, Georgia, the, the uh, uh, Texas area, the Gulf Coast of Texas. And we even looked at Sarasota, but we couldn't get a direct flight. You can spend all day flying if you're not careful. Um, so it's worked for us. If you're going to stay in place, um, and, and a lot of people do because they have friends and family where they where they are currently living, and that, and that's important. But that's that's the values issue when you're talking about what's really important to you. Then that would be, and that's important to us too, which is why we go back and forth. Um, then you have to look at what do you need to change in your home to make it comfortable, and and it will provide your needs as you age. And there are a lot of organizations out there that help people with that. And then moving completely, I, I really recommend that people do a really good research. I'm, I'm working with a couple now that they're, that's their primary thing. They, they want to figure out how to agree on where to retire. So I'm really trying to get them to, um, and they're doing it, doing research on various places. There used to be a magazine, but it went out of print during the pandemic, unfortunately. It's called Where to Retire. And we subscribed to that for years. Um, but but all the major magazines like Money Magazine, AARP, I'm just trying to think of some other magazines. If you If you do some research on best places to retire, you'll get a lot of sites that talk about like the least expensive, um, and if you're looking, you know, what are you looking for? You're looking for a college town. You want a city environment where there's walkability. Do you want something where you're not all crowded in? You need space. That's another thing that that this particular couple is looking for. Um, um, you know, yeah, it's a lot of things to consider. And uh, I retire. Uh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. There, and I dropped this chat in there. It is. It is kind of an interesting. You know. It, it's funny um, because I'm in publishing, you, you know, one of the, one of the really hot magazine categories, cause you see them out there are health and fitness and dieting and food and things like that. And a lot of times it's, you know, just reading about something uh -huh. is empowering, but you may never act on it. You, you know, it's yeah. sort of like, I'm going to read about going to the gym and someday maybe I'll go. And I think one of the things that I love about where to retire and also international living, that's the one for international retirement. Uh -huh. is Sometimes it's, it's kind of like buying a lottery ticket. It's sort of like reading it, doing the research and you might, you might make the decision, but at least you did some research and you sort of dream about yourself, you know, on the Italian Riviera or something like that in, in retirement. But you may say, look, man, I got dozens of friends here. I love where I'm at and I, and I want to stay here. Um, so maybe people, you know, maybe some people might want to consider um, definitely doing research and going to stay in a place that you, especially internationally, you, you know, go and stay for three or four months um, or if you're, if you're thinking of going to a certain place in the U S you know, getting newspapers, spending as, as much time as you can there to, to really make sure that that is 
a place for you. If, if you're looking for, if you want a real active life and you want to be in a warmer climate, but you're worried about money, which one's going to, which one's going to weigh out, you know, like those are, those are the decisions that you, that you need to make as a couple, if you're married and as a single person, be bouncing it off your financial planner or your family or friends. You know, I, I think singles sometimes are, are much better at developing that network because they don't have a partner. Yep. And, and Maritza said, she, she's like, hmm, how do singles and couples differ in retirement choices? And and Maritza, I, I put a bunch of resources in there and, and we have so many discussions on solo aging. The uh, one of the things that I've, I, so a lot of times as married couples, we go along in life thinking that this is the way it's going to be for the rest of our life. We're both going to pass away on the same hour at the same day. And that rarely happens. And there's a dependence a lot of times of married couples, whereas single folks are more empowered to sort of plan and map out their, their plan in advance. Now, one of the things that's important as we look for a the future, and this is the topic of our solo aging discussions is, is what happens if there's a healthcare issue? Like who is your network that's gonna support you and take care of you? And, and thinking about that, married couples need to think about it too, trust me. But but as a single person, uh, they need to think about it a little bit uh, as, as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, man. Yeah. It, well, we're getting close to the top of the hour here, uh, D. These conversations <laughs> always go back, go by really quickly. Um, the um, the but but I want to give you an opportunity to. Uh, is there something that you wanted to talk about, or something in the book that you want to make sure that we we address? Well, you know, it might be a good time to tell the story of Mike and Mary. Those aren't their real names because th this goes to where to retire. Um, he was he was uh, coaching in a corporate setting and she had retired from teaching. And he really was into his career and she had already retired and wanted to move to the beach. So they could not, it was causing a lot of struggles for them. And I was going to this coaching conference and this relationship coach was looking for a couple to coach. So it was perfect. I said, Mike, I think this would be a really good situation for you and Mary to work this out. So they did, they went, they got coached and what they decided to do together in, this, in the process of the coaching was that they would sell their home they, 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 and they did, they bought in a 55 plus community and they, the plan was, I, I'm not sure how it turned out, but they, they were in a position to be able to save to when he was ready and had his business established enough that he could be remote, um, that they could find, they would, they would move to the beach. And so, and so they did a step-by-step -step process in, in terms of their, their, um, their move to a, to a location. I, I, Which is another way to, you know, to yeah. do it. Um, so somebody says, uh, this is a great way for us to close out our discussion. It's D is uh -huh. wonderful. And I would like to schedule a session with her. I visited uh -huh. her website, but I don't see the fee for per session. Is she willing to share that info? And, and are you taking on new clients or are you in your transition phase? Um, yeah. I'm, I am taking on coaching clients. Yeah, because that that is not long term, but I did. I am still working in my therapy practice, but I haven't taken any new clients in a year, over a year, actually, it's been it's been very hard not to take new clients, but I really didn't want to start with anyone that I wasn't going to finish with. So everyone that I'm working with now in my therapy practice, I will continue with and we'll kind of phase out together. But I, I am taking new uh, coaching clients. And, and so I'd be happy to talk to, to if, if she wants to send me an email and we can talk about yep. it. And and how I, I'll send her some information. Okay. And so th as far as how that uh, that's paid and things like that, reach out to Dee and you can share that. I'm, I'm assuming coaching is an hourly rate and it works that way. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a four, I usually do a 45 minute session and I uh, offer a coaching packet. If you get four sessions, if you, if you buy four sessions, there's a little bit of a discount. So, you know, I, and, and if some people just want to have a session and if it goes well, they want have to have more Then I just, I just kind of walk, work all that into the. Yeah. Four the, sessions. Uh, it, it's funny. I want to recognize what uh, Leslie says. She says, Steve, you should think about doing a few sessions just by yourself. You realize <laughs> how much you have to offer. I I, apo I want to apologize to D and all the people that I have on here. I've done 300 of these. And what the, what happens is so much of this content intersects. And so when you bring up something I recognizing that the people in our audience didn't go to the five things that we had on solo aging. I'm like just all enthusiastic <laughs> about throwing in this type of stuff. But, um, but, but yeah, Leslie, I am thinking about doing something sort of like that, almost like an office hours, open discussion type thing. And uh, I, thanks for that. And, and, and that'll help me minimize my interruption to our wonderful speakers <laughs> that we have. Um, I think that sounds like a great idea, Steve, because if, if you, you having done 300 of these yeah. sessions, I mean, you're just, you've got all this wealth of information, you oh, know, it's, it's all integrated. I, I feel like the luckiest guy in the room because okay. I, I love this. I mean, I love hearing your thoughts and, and even more what I love is getting a thought leader like you on stage and then the feedback and the questions, you know, from people like Maritza and, and Leslie, it's, it just drives it into a dynamic that is uh, so it's helpful to me emotionally, but, uh, but I think it helps our audience members as well. Oh, um, so, yeah. so this has been a blast. It's Friday. It's St. Patrick's day. So, uh, I don't know how many of you are drinking on this call, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, hopefully this is a lot to talk about at the bar tonight. Um, but, uh, we will, we'll see folks next week and, uh, D, thanks so much. And I, I thank you, Steve. I, I really appreciate it. I enjoyed it. And we can dive into this even in greater detail. All sure. right. Be happy to. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Thanks for listening. Okay. Thank. Oh, wait. Mary, oh. Mary, Mary, I love that you said this. I enjoyed listening. Very informative. I'm graduating in two weeks. She used my oh. term. Uh, oh. so, so happy graduation, Mary. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I hope that this was helpful. All right. Great.